Taking off and refitting a cassette is a pretty straightforward and easy job. It requires just a few basic tools and very little mechanical skills. And so, here's how it's done. Okay, so before we crack on and get our hands dirty, let's take a look at the tools you're gonna to need for the job. As I said, pretty basic requirements in terms of tools for this one, just a couple of specific uh, tools. Basically, the first and foremost is a lock ring tool. So this is a spline tool which fits into the cassette lock ring and will enable you to undo it. Uh, in this case, this one's got a spanner, uh, flats on there or a quarter inch socket drive. There are various different types of these tools available. I'm gonna run through some of the different variants as we move through the steps of this video. Um, also worth noting that if you're a Shimano and a SRAM user, the lock ring tools are the same. However, if you're a Campagnolo user, then there is a specific lock ring tool for Campagnolo cassettes, so bear that in mind. The other thing you're gonna need is a chain whip or similar tool to hold the cassette while you undo the lock ring. Uh, most chain whips look very similar to this one with a small fixed section of chain and then this sort of longer section of chain which wraps around the sprocket. You'll see how that works, it's quite simple to use um, when we come to take the cassette off shortly. But I'd also like to point out this tool. Um, this is by Pedro's, uh, it's called the Vice Whip. There are various different styles of this available from other brands too, but I think this is a really good tool. I mean, it's super easy to use. You basically just adjust the jaws, clamp that onto the cassette, and it's a, a super easy way to hold the cassette when you're undoing lock ring. So I really like that tool. That's just one of my favorites. Okay, so those are the specific tools you're gonna need. Uh, there's a couple of other more generic tools which will also be handy. Um, as I said, a lot of the lock ring tools that you use will require you to use a spanner to, to actually undo the lock ring. So an adjustable spanner is a really good bet for this particular one, for instance, um, or there's this style of tool. Again, adjustable spanner would work fine on that for undoing the lock ring. Um, so that's good to have. When it comes to refitting the cassette and tightening up the lock ring later, um, you know, you should also potentially use a torque wrench too. So that's something else you need to bear in mind for refitting the, the lock ring later. All right, so without further ado, let's move on to cassette removal. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the lock ring tool inserted. Um, this is a Shimano 11 speed cassette, so pretty common. Um, and this one happened to be mounted to a hub that has a standard nine mil quick release spindle. Um, now, that won't really change anything in terms of the techniques or, or how the lock ring works, um, but it does mean that uh, there are different types of tool that might be better suited to the application. So for instance, here we've got, uh, I'll say a nine mil QR, but there are also things like through axles now with the 12 by 142 rear axle standard being quite common. Um, and there's different tools that would be better suited to that. So I'll run through a couple of options on this wheel uh, and then we'll move to a through axle as well. So if you're using a quick release uh, rear spindle, and you're using a tool very similar to this one, which is quite common how, how the lock ring tools look. This is a Park Tools one, I think. Um, pop that into the lock ring and engage that, as I mentioned earlier. What's really handy to do is push the quick release spindle back through the tool, as you can see there, and then just pop the nut back on finger tight. Okay, and what that does is secures the tool really snugly into the lock ring, and that's quite important. And you'll see that that's the point of the sort of variations in the types of tool from other brands as well, because what you want is that lock ring tool to be held firm and not slip or be able to move when you're undoing the cassette. Now, the lock rings are actually quite tight, so you'll find they require quite a bit of force to undo them. Uh, the tools are obviously made of like hardened steel and the lock ring itself is soft aluminium, so they, they can be prone to damage if the tool slips or, or comes out at a skewed angle as you're trying to undo them. So yeah, getting that tool fitted really snugly is an important first step. Another way that you could do that, using again this wheel as the example, I would remove the quick release completely. And then there's this tool from Pro. This is one of my favorites actually, because it's a really simple tool to use. So here you can see you've kind of got an all-in-one tool. You've got the, the handle, you've got the lock ring tool, and you've got this central post that sticks out, which is designed to fit straight into the center of the spindle. And again, that just helps the tool to locate squarely, neatly, and snugly into there. So as you can see, then there's no way for that tool to slip as you're using the, the lock ring tool against the chain whip. Um, okay, so that's that particular example. While we're here then, let's also take a look at the other one I was mentioning, which is the bolt through, through axle. Um, this is a 12 speed SRAM cassette. So again, as I mentioned at the start, the, the technique for removing the cassette is gonna be pretty much the same. But in this case, 
this style of tool would be a better choice. So you've got a, a lock ring tool that's mounted to a, a 12 mil uh, central spigot here. Again, so it fits neatly into the axle and just holds everything snug and square as the tool fits into the, the cassette lock ring. Okay, so that's a just a different type of tool. And now we'll move on to the next step for removing the cassette. Okay, so for this next stage, I've come down to floor level. You'll see why that's important in just a sec. I'm gonna take you through uh, using the chain whip. So basically, you've got this small fixed piece of chain at one end, and you need to locate that onto one of the sprockets like so, and then let the longer piece of chain just drape around and follow that sprocket. So you end up with it fitted pretty much like that. Um, it's better if you pick one of the sprockets higher up the cassette because that bigger sprocket will give you a bit more leverage for one, but also it keeps you out of the way of the lock ring tool when you're undoing that. Um, another way to use a chain whip, which occasionally is, is a good idea, is to come further down and actually wrap that longer piece of chain the whole way around, sort of 360 degrees around that sprocket, and then locate its this end back onto itself. Um, what that does is ensure there is absolutely no way that that chain can slip off that sprocket, no matter how much force you have to use to undo the lock ring. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a really sort of double safe way of using a chain whip. While we're here, I'll show you as well these that I mentioned earlier. As I said, a real kind of labor saver in many ways. You just pick the cassette sprocket you want to pop them on and adjust the tension on the mole grips to, so you can just literally clamp them shut and then job done. That's going to be a really good and safe way to hold the cassette ready to undo the lock ring. For the purpose of this video, as these are more common, I'm going to show you the removal using a standard chain whip. So I'm going to locate that on my cassette like so. I'm going to carry on using this pro lock ring tool as it works really well for this particular setup. So. Now this is why we've come down to floor level. So it means you can really get your body weight behind this uh, and use the floor to brace against. As I said earlier, the lock rings are actually done up with quite a bit of force, so they will require a bit of oomph to get them undone. Um, and in that regard, just think about how you're placing the tools uh, on the wheel as well. If you were to have these sort of facing upwards, you're making your life really difficult. You're not giving yourself a mechanical advantage really for undoing the lock ring. If you can place the tool sort of roughly at the three o'clock and sort of nine o'clock position like that, when it comes to undoing the lock ring, you've got full control and you can get your body weight down on the tool and just undo the lock ring like so. And so that's the sort of safest and best practice for undoing a lock ring. Lock ring's now undone. As you can see, I can undo that with my fingers now. If you're gonna take this cassette off and chuck it in the bin and replace it with a new one, absolutely fine. But if you're gonna use this cassette again, i.e. you're just maybe taking it off to change gear ratios or perhaps to clean it, um, then what's a really good idea is as you take it off, wiggle it off all in one piece because you'll find a lot of cassettes are in various different stages you can get somewhere where all of the sprockets are completely individual somewhere they're, they are pinned as one piece but regardless it's a good idea just get everything together in the order it came off and pop a zip tie through and that way you know any spacers the lock ring itself they're all orientated exactly as they need to be when you come to refit your cassette so again that's a good little tip it just means you won't lose anything as well um, so it's all there when you come to put it back on Okay, so while I'm here, let's also run through another typical uh, cassette type that you might come across and uh, taking that off. So this is a SRAM 12 speed cassette. Um, it's on a, a bike that's got a 12 by 142 through axle in the rear, which again now becoming pretty common uh, on modern road bikes. So I'm gonna use this tool that I showed you earlier that's just got that uh, specific 12 mm um, bolt through attachment. So that slots in like so. Now, the key difference with the SRAM 12 speed setup is there's no external lock ring. It works in exactly the same way and the process of removing the cassette is the same, but the lock ring is sort of built into the, the cassette itself. So let me show you that. For this one, I'm gonna need an adjustable spanner to fit this tool, but the cassette, uh, the, sorry, the chain whip's gonna fit on exactly as before. Drape that round like so. Pop that to roughly my three o'clock position and then use my adjustable spanner, get that tight. And then as you undo this lock ring, okay, you'll find that what you're actually doing now is unwinding that internal threaded locking system that SRAM uses on the XDR driver body. Okay, now we can probably undo that, let go of that. And so now as that cassette comes off, you'll see 
the, the cassettes come off as one piece, so you don't have to worry about losing parts for these cassettes. And the lock ring itself is, as I said, built into the inner face of that, that cassette there. Um, very slightly different style of free hub on these uh, 12 speed systems, but to all intended purposes, exactly the same techniques required. Right, so while we're at this stage of proceedings, I just wanted to touch on one thing quickly, which may or may not crop up when you take a cassette off. Um, what I just showed you there was a, a really straightforward example. We've undone the lock ring uh, and the cassette sprocket slid off really easily from the free hub body. Um, as things get older and grubby and dirty in there, sometimes you do need to use a bit more force to get the, the sprockets to slide off. Um, and sometimes you might just find they're absolutely stuck solid. Now, there's a reason for that, or the most common reason for that, um, is in fact the fact that the free hub body that the sprockets sit on, they're generally made of, again, lightweight materials. No one wants heavy wheels these days, so all the materials we're using in wheel construction is super light and minimalist. So one of the downsides to that is that where sprockets are made of steel and a hard material and the, the free hub bodies are made of aluminium, then the sprockets can gouge into that. And I'll show you a close up of this in a sec, but you can see this is an old free hub body that's a really good example of where that's happened. The sprockets have dug themselves into the free hub splines, and that would have meant that when the lock ring was taken off, the sprockets wouldn't have slid off the spline. So that would have been really stuck and quite a job to get off. But I'm going to show you a really useful technique to, to resolve that right now. So if you do find yourself in that situation I've just explained, where you've taken the cassette lock ring off and the cassette sprockets still feel like they won't budge, then here's what to do. Don't whack it with a hammer, that won't really help you. Um, the best thing is to get a second chain whip. Um, and that way, what you can do is fit one uh, in the same way that you would do on, if you use the top sprocket here, in the same way you would do as if you were taking the, the lock ring off, and then fit the second chain whip in the opposing direction, lower down, on the sprocket that you want to free up. Now, this way you can work the, the chain whips one against the other, and with a little bit of force, you'll feel when the, the sprocket sort of relocates into the, the sort of spline of the free up body. Um, it's, it's tricky to explain on camera, but you will, with a bit of feel, get the knack for that. Uh, and that's, it's just a small movement. You're only bringing it back just a, a fraction of a degree, really, just so that it locates back in that central spline. Uh, and it will enable the, the sprockets to slide off the free hub body smoothly. You may have to actually do that for more than one uh, individual sprocket along the way. So you might have to sort of tackle the cassette systematically along. But that's the technique you need. Uh, it's a, an easy and a sort of a, a more controlled way of trying to get a stuck cassette off the free hub body if you suspect that uh, what I described has happened. When it comes to refitting the cassette, a really useful feature is that the free hub bodies are designed with one wider spline, which means that the cassette sprockets will only fit on in one particular orientation, which means there's no real way you can do that bit wrong, which is uh, which super handy. Um, what I would say is before you put the sprockets on, it's worth just giving the free hub body a light coating of some grease just to make sure that yeah, it's well lubricated, it won't corrode um, and so on. And also, yeah, it just helps with removal of the sprockets um, next time you want to take the cassette off. You certainly don't need to go crazy with the grease, just a small amount um, and just wipe that along each of the splines um, really is all that's needed. Just work your way around and apply a little bit of grease as you go. So now we're ready to fit the cassette. So at this point, a little bit of personal preference comes in, depending on how you like to do it. I quite like to fit cassettes with the wheel sort of flat. Um, that way they'll just sort of find their own way onto the splines, and I prefer working in that manner to start with. Um, up to you how you do it though. Um, the other thing I like to do is find the wider slot uh, and put that to the 12 o'clock position so I can see that it's here on this particular free hub body. So I'm gonna pop that there so that um, when I come to put my cassette sprockets on, um, I like to sort of rest the wheel up against my workbench there so that I can hold it with my leg. Um, just keeps my hands free. I've got my cassette sprockets ordered as they came off, as I said, keep them on a zip tie. That makes this really easy to, to put them back on and how they came off. Um, and then I can find, it's pretty easy to see the wider um, spline on there. Uh, I know that's at the 12 o'clock position, so I can just slot that straight down on. Um, and just keep going working my way through the cassette. Now, this one is the Dura-Ace cassette, so it's in 
many different parts. The, the first few sprockets are in groups, and then you get to a point where you've got individual sprockets and spacers in between. So some cassettes are fully pinned, so they go on as one piece. Some cassettes are all entire, entirely individual sprockets and spacers. So just, yeah, I mean, it will take you more time to put the, the cassette back on if it's individual sprockets, but it's the same process. Um, make sure you remember the spacers in between. So pop your spacer on where that's needed and then just keep working through with the sprocket, next spacer and so on. All the sprockets are on. As I said, this is an 11 speed Shimano cassette. Um, the last thing to do then is the lock ring. Now I like to put the lock ring on using just finger tight to begin with because as I said earlier in the video, these are made of aluminium. They're quite easy to damage. You can cross thread them as well. So by using just your fingers to start with, it means that you can feel and engage that thread correctly. If you try and do that on a tool, sometimes it's trickier to find the engagement of the thread. So just my preference, just start it with, with your fingers. And what you'll find as well is the back side of these lock rings is knurled. So that's there to stop them, uh, stop vibration from causing them to come loose in use. So basically you'll feel as it picks up on that knurling, it will make that kind of notched noise as it starts to tighten. So I just get it to that point um, and then you know, you're pretty much good to go to the next stage, which is to tighten up the lock ring. Um, I've come down to floor level again for this because that tightening phase is just so much easier done against the floor. You've got something to push against. Um, how you tighten the lock ring is going to depend a little bit on the type of tool you're using. Um, the pro tool that I used to remove this cassette earlier um, is nice and easy because that's got a handle built into it, for instance. So that gives you good control over the, the tool and enables you to make sure that tool doesn't slip as you tighten. Um, another way, if you're using this style of lock ring tool, um, just like we did with the removal, it's a really good idea to secure that tool in. If you've got a, a quick release hub, pop the, the QR back through, just do that up finger tight. And in this instance, you'd just be using your adjustable spanner on the lock ring tool and then tightening it like so. Uh, when it comes to the tightening, uh, to be honest, I would say just good and tight, um, you know, against the floor, a decent shove. The, the back side of the lock ring as we discussed earlier, is it's got a knurled face, so you'll feel it's kind of notched as it tightens up. So you don't need to go crazy with these. They're, you know, once they're tight, they're tight. They're not going to come loose. Um, so yeah, just a good and tight, um, decent amount of force required just to snug those up. But if you do want to be by the book, recommended torque settings for uh, a lock ring on most cassettes is 40 newton meters. So grab yourself a torque wrench. In this case, I've got. Uh, one set up already with a lock ring tool on. Um, this is a Topeak one, which is quite handy because it's got that quarter inch socket drive in the back of it. So I can pop that on my torque wrench. And again, just pressing down using the floor as my brace. There we go, I can check. Yeah, there's 40 Newton meters. So I know that is good and tight. Final checks then is just to, I like to spin the cassette backwards and just have a little look. Um, I can see then if there's any of the sprockets uh, might have not located themselves squarely. Also checking the gaps in between look consistent. I haven't got any spaces um, misplaced or, or anything. And also just hold the cassette at the top and just double check that there's no loose sprockets all the way up. That would indicate that even though the lock ring was tight, that something wasn't, uh, that, that a spacer was maybe missing at the, the back of the cassette and wasn't therefore compressing all the sprockets firmly together. So yeah, final checks, just check nothing's loose, all looks good, spacings are even, and you're good to go. Before we sign off completely on this video though, let's take a look at fitting a cassette for the 12 speed uh, SRAM system, which uses the XDR driver body. Um, I've got one of those just here. Um, as I said at the very start, most of the techniques for removal and fitting are exactly the same. The difference here is there's no external lock ring. So the cassette, which is neatly one piece in any case, makes life a bit easier fitting, just sits onto there and you just find its way into the splines. You'll be able to feel that really easily, how it locates. Just gently turn it until it locates. And once you've got it located, then you can use whichever tool uh, is most appropriate. In this case, I can use this Pro tool and you can just tighten that in the same way that I did with the, the Shimano cassette there. And again, if we wanted to check the torque settings, 40 Newton meters. There 
There we go. So that's on, all talked up, and that's a, a SRAM 12 speaker set fitted. If you have just fitted a new cassette, then now would be a really good time to also fit a new chain. But at the very least, check your chain wear. We have a video for how to do that, and I'll pop the link to that in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video and found the content useful, do give us a like and subscribe to the channel as that will really help us to generate more content for you in this way. And if it's content you're after, head over to cyclist.co.uk for all the latest news, tech, and in-depth product and bike reviews. Thanks for watching.